Hello fellow musicians, Ashley Bush here, composer of Goddess Triquetra. In this video, I'm gonna be going through the score and talking specifically about your section and how your section functions in the piece. We're gonna be going through with the score on screen and I'm gonna be listening along with. This is meant to give you a little bit of a heads up in the rehearsal process, insight into what I was thinking when I wrote something and how it functions together within the piece. I highly recommend that you have your part in front of you as we are going through and doing this together so that you can see specifically what parts I'm referring to. All right, let's get started. Love that bowed vibraphone in the beginning. Yes, air sounds. The clarinet in particular is so incredibly good at doing these extended techniques with air sounds by the nature of the way the instrument is built. And so really dedicate yourself to these air sounds. Practice them. It may feel a little silly because in a concert band setting, we might not be accustomed to doing some extended techniques, but the, the ocean wave kind of feel that comes from doing those air sounds is really important to the setup of the beginning of the piece. This bass clarinet solo, it's long tone, so it may not feel like much of a solo, but it is 100% setting up everything that is to come afterward. This bass clarinet part is so important. You're not hiding, you are at the forefront. The bass clarinet is the thing that is happening here and everyone else is decorating you. All right, here, so when we're getting into the staccato pitches, it is so important in this piece that your articulations are accurate and that you're making a very big distinction between them. So that accents, tenutos, and staccatos, and of course things that are slurred, are all gonna have a really different feel. And that it's important you highlight each one of those differences. Da, 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 da. They all have a slightly different feel to them. Ah, yes, this eighth note section. So when you're going da 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 you may notice that your rhythm doesn't quite fit in within the meter because the meter was actually written for the melodic part here. And there is a polyrhythm happening. There's two rhythms happening at the same time in two different meters. And obviously we don't notate it that way. And so it's important that you emphasize where you sit. Some of these accents might fall on octaves, but they're really important that they be accented no matter where they fall within the measure. So it is so important that these sustained pitches are going to be uh, like warm and rumbly because this is a place where we're taking a break from that really pointed, angry, in your face kind of staccato. And so think about that juxtaposition. There's another solo here in the bass clarinet that's functioning the exact same way as it does in the beginning. This is a great place where you can listen down to the saxophone sound. Remember, the clarinet is really good at inserting its sound into another instrument and amplifying the timbre contrast. That's one of the things that clarinet is just so incredibly good at. Clarinet has more colors than any other instrument in the band, by far. And so emphasizing that, really just exploring what your instrument can do and contributing that into all the different parts of this piece as its character is changing, it's gonna be really important. Uh, in that part that we just heard with those um, Stata Staccatos, and actually happens here too, those repeated notes. Yes, you have repeated uh, eighth notes, but everyone else is listening to you to be able to figure out where their rhythm sits because every part that has something that is rhythmically difficult, uh, there's another instrument that's supporting it with having a constant steady rhythm to make it easier to hear where you fit within the measure, and there, that is your job. All right, going into the softer section here. Clarinet is what's happening until this humming starts. So I really want you to explore how icy you can make your instrument sound. It's still, by nature, the clarinet, the clarinet's very warm to begin with in its timbre. But here, you can imagine like a, a frozen sort of tundra and that you are the stable sound. You're the snow that's sitting on the ground the entire time. Everyone's walking on top of you. You're the one supporting everybody. When we get to this humming section, it is so incredibly important that this humming section have your complete dedication. 
You can actually hear in the uh, realization that is 25 copies of me and my sound engineer that we did the humming ourselves over and over again to really feel what it would sound like. And you have a, a, an amount of time to complete that humming, but I am more interested in you really dedicating yourself to making it as musical as you can make it. Remember, this part of the piece is a mother who's had her daughter taken from her and she's wandering the earth trying to find her. And so you can imagine the, the, the atmospheric sound that might be accompanying her journey. That's the humming. The humming is the thing that's happening in this section. And <clears throat> the clarinet part when you are playing Ordinario is leading into it so incredibly specifically. And that humming is gonna work only if you 100% dedicate yourself to it. And even if you're not comfortable, practice. You are all musicians. You can all sing. You can all hum. I am 100% confident of that. And so practice so that you can get to a place where you're comfortable with it before you start recording or performing. All right, so getting ready here, making sure that you are following really closely. These rhythms have to be precise. Uh, you have um, quarter note triplets and eighth note triplets happening at the same time. If it's not really clean, then the effect is not going to come across. Another place to make sure you're being assertive, that you're really staying on top and focused. You have to have laser focus to really perform this piece as it's intended because there's so many things that are shifting all the time. You can't let your brain relax, not even for a second. Uh, when I coach ensembles on pieces that I write like this, uh, one of the best ways to describe it is that you should be out of breath by the time you're, per you're done performing because you've been so focused in on everything that you're doing. And if you perform it that way, the audience will feel it that way and give you the reaction that you want. My little nod to Back to the Future. <laughs> the clarinets have an interesting role in this particular section because again, calling on the versatility of your instrument and um, really exploring how it can go back and forth. You're going back and forth between sustained pitches and these really sharp pointed kind of pitches. Make sure that you're drawing attention to those contrasts. Here, be very, very confident because there isn't a whole lot of warning. If you're not counting, it's definitely not gonna come across. You have to be counting as specifically as you can. This is kind of this, uh, contained energy and fear that's about to be exploded right now. Make sure you're calling a lot of attention and being really distinct in how you are handling those register jumps. This section should be as loud as possible as long as you're maintaining control of your pitch because there's a lot of dissonant crunchy harmonies in here that are just going to sound like mush unless you're really focusing on your intonation and making sure that that's really, really accurate. So again, clarinet here. If you're playing the bass clarinet part, this is the backbone of this section, that low, warm, rumbly going on, uh, but at the same time as the timpani, and at the same time as this uh, icy kind of glockenspiel. And so it's so incredibly important that you have a sustained pitch here, but this is a solo, 100%, because the section can't exist without you having your part contributed. All right, so if you have any questions, by all means, please let me know. You should have my contact information and uh, I'm happy to answer them if you wanna chat uh, via Zoom or what have you. Um, please let me know and happy practicing.